shop items that are extraordinary, handmade, affordable. Etsy has it. People remember ads with young people having a good time. So to help you remember that Liberty Mutual customizes your home insurance, here's a pool party. Good times insurance. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Tomorrow, Taylor Swift makes her Toronto Film Festival debut, and E.T. is there. It was an amazing experience. Before we go, get ready to enjoy Thor anytime you want, because Thor Love and Thunder is available on digital right now. Yeah, and the God of Thunder may just want to change his name, too. God of the Gag Reel. <laughs> go to E.T. online for more. Take care. Happening now. The people of Great Britain and the world mourning the passing of Elizabeth II, the Queen of England. Coming up, local reaction to her death. And we show you a photographer's legacy, one that he hoped would help those battling cancer even after his death. And we have a few hits on the radar screen to talk about. We'll take a close look at those. Plus, the newest drought monitor is in. We'll see what improvements have been made over the past few weeks. The News at 5 starts right now. Many people felt they knew her personally. The world reacting to the news Queen Elizabeth II has died. She was the longest serving monarch in history. And from the first moment, the doctors expressed grave concern for her medical condition overnight. Her family began gathering at her bedside in Scotland, some of them rushing across the country to get there just in time. Then at approximately 1240 our time, the royal family using Twitter to make the somber announcement saying, quote, the queen died peacefully in Balmoro this afternoon. The king and queen consort will remain at Balmoro this evening and will return to London tomorrow, end quote. As you can imagine, the people of England are in mourning. Hundreds of thousands expected to pay their respects. Many adding flowers, as you're looking at, to the growing memorial set up outside Windsor Castle. Many more expected to stand in a vigil to mark the queen's passing. Meantime, back here stateside in Washington, D.C., the American flag lowered to half staff in honor of Britain's Queen Elizabeth. Some of you may remember the queen visited the Alamo City more than three decades ago. It was her first trip to Texas, and it included stops in San Antonio, Austin, and Dallas. Our R.J. Marquez is live with local reaction to the queen's death, including from a local pub owner who's in London right now. R.J. Yeah, that's right, Stephen Ursula. We're outside Mad Dog's British Pub right here along the River Walk. And as you guys just mentioned, a lot of people even here just stopping to take a time to take a photo or pay their respects to Queen Elizabeth. There's a cardboard cutout behind me where many people are just stopping to just take a moment to pay honor and respect to the Queen. And you mentioned that trip to San Antonio. That was back in 1991, of course, included a trip down the San Antonio River with then Mayor Lila Cockrell. There was also a stop at the Arneson River Theater and the Alamo. There were 25,000 people that were here for that Queen's visit. So the Queen transcended, obviously, generations. And this is a big loss for many people around the world, including here at home. Terry Corliss is the CEO and owner of Mad Dog's British Pub on the Riverwalk. He is currently in London for a trip with his co-workers. We caught up with him today to discuss the mood and feeling right now throughout the country. The whole of London is in shock. I've received 20 or 30 phone calls, texts, uh, and and the, the the talk everywhere. I mean, I mean, this lady's been on the phone for over seventy years. She, she's also been a, a mother and a grandmother. She's been a statesman, uh, and, and at the same time, she has been the one who has been able to move forward with the times. That's right, guys. And Terry telling us that also through all this social and economic changes throughout the world, the one constant there in England was Queen Elizabeth. And Terry also mentioned that he was born and raised about 50 miles outside of London and takes about annual trips there to go back home and visit family. So this is a big loss for them. He moved to San Antonio in 1991 and 1999, excuse me, and now owns this very popular bar. So coming up at six o'clock, we're going to talk to some people here at Mad Dogs, a couple of patrons about the fascination with the British royal family and what this loss means to them. Stephen Ursula, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. She certainly was the hardest working mom out there for 70 years. The 96-year-old monarch dying while on summer break at Balmoral Castle. It was her favorite place to go on holiday. ABC's Rena Roy has a look back at her extraordinary life. The longest serving monarch in British history has died. 
Queen Elizabeth II passing away at Balmoral Castle, her estate in Scotland, where she had been on summer break. The royal family, including her sons, Prince Andrew and Prince Edward, rushing to her side, along with her grandsons, Prince William and Prince Harry. The 96-year-old's death comes after she canceled a virtual meeting Wednesday. Her doctors concerned about her health, advising her to rest. She was last seen in public Tuesday when she swore in UK's new prime minister, Liz Truss. Born on April 21, 1926, Her Majesty was never expected to take the throne. That changed in 1936 when her father unexpectedly became King George VI after his older brother's abdication. She won public admiration by doing her part during World War II, training as a truck driver and a mechanic, soon after marrying Navy officer Philip Mountbatten. Prince Charles, born in 1948, was the first of their four children. After battling an illness, her father died when she was abroad in Kenya in 1952. The 25-year-old princess was now queen. There were low moments among the highs, but through it all, the queen remaining the steady center of her growing family and always supported by Prince Philip, her husband of 73 years, until his death in April of 2021. Today marks the end of the second Elizabethan age, the end of an extraordinary reign that spanned seven decades and so much change. A family and a nation says goodbye to a much-loved matriarch and monarch. The Queen's funeral will take place 10 days from now following a national period of mourning. It will likely take place at Westminster Abbey. As for what's next in the monarchy, Prince Charles is now king. He and Camilla are expected to be crowned side by side. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. And a programming note as well, coming up later on tonight at 7 o'clock, beginning at 7, ABC News is going to provide several hours worth of special coverage on the passing of the Queen of England. New at 5, Hayes County authorities putting out a warning. There are people overdosing and dying, especially children from fentanyl. During a press conference today, law officers announcing that San Marcos has now responded to 45 fentanyl overdoses this year, with the city of Kyle investigating 25 hit cases and five deaths. So far, there are two individuals who've been arrested, Anthony Perez Rios from San Marcos, as well as a teenager, both arrested for multiple charges, including a felony for allegedly making and distributing fentanyl-laced pills. At the time of his arrest, he also had in his possession at his residence a shotgun and a rifle, and he had nearly 400 counterfeit Percocet pills containing fentanyl. Those were ready for deadly distribution in our community at the time of his arrest. Suspect number two is a 16-year-old juvenile. Now, coming up at 6 o'clock, Alicia Barrera is going to share which Texas city these deadly pills have been tracked to and who is making them. The surveillance cameras caught them on video. Now, Seguin police have arrested one suspect. They know the names of the four other suspects. The department releasing the names of those suspects that authorities say carjacked a 15-year-old boy in a Walmart parking lot. That incident happened on Monday night at the store in the 500 block of South State Highway 123 bypass. 17-year-old Kendrick Car Hardwell Jr. is in custody. Seguin police are still looking for 17-year-old Waquez Turner of Port Arthur, 18-year-old Chase Sheeran of Port Neches, 19-year-old Caden Sheeran of Port Neches, and, and a 16-year-old boy from Grove. All are charged with aggravated robbery. Investigators believe the teens are in the Port Arthur area. Anyone with information on their whereabouts asked to contact the Seguin Police Department or Crime Stoppers at 830-379-2123. The legacy of professional photographer Reg Campbell now on display for everyone to see. Campbell capturing the stark realism of his own journey through cancer before his death back in 2020. This exhibit at the San Antonio Center for Photography in King William, Jesse DeGollado says, Campbell wanted to show why a bone marrow registry is so critical to saving lives. When you're a patient receiving treatment in the hospital, you are regularly pricked with some needles. Somehow, in spite of his leukemia, Reg Campbell took these photographs for good reason. Adriana Vasquez, who was with South Texas Blood and Tissue in 2018, had been trying to find Campbell the bone marrow transplant he needed. The photos, she says, were to show potential donors the kind of people like himself who could benefit. To give you an inside look of, of that patient and that family that you're helping. 
he was able to do that in such a raw way, and I think it is really important for the public to see that. To see what cancer had done to a professional photographer who was a fitness trainer in the prime of health. He was really trying so hard to articulate his message and just trying pulling himself up. Yet in spite of successful appeals for blood on behalf of not just himself, they say Campbell never found his perfect match. Although it was only a partial match, his sister's bone marrow was able to give Reg Campbell another year of life. His wife and his daughter um, inspired him to, to fight that fight as hard as he could, um, but also to, to do that for, for his community. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. Check out your traffic on this Thursday at 5.07, I-35 at Wiedner, and you can see traffic is heavy in both directions, but moving along just fine at this hour. And we do have a few pockets of rain to talk about. Not a whole lot on the radar screen. You'll get, look across south and central Texas, uh, mo mostly closer to the Gulf Coast is where we have some of the heaviest downpours, even just outside of the city of Aquero, so closer to the coastal bend there. You look locally, and we've got one downpour right now on the far west side of town. It was moving south down 1604, and now it's kind of weakened a little bit and pushed its way eastward right over Lackland Air Force Base. And this is just drifting to the southeast and about to cross over I-35 momentarily. This should continue to weaken over the next 20 minutes or so and probably isn't going to pack much more of a punch. You look elsewhere, we had a few showers in southern Bear County, moving into northern Atascosa County, and these are falling apart as well. What we have out there isn't lasting all that long, but hey, it's better than Nothing. We'll take it. We'll take all that we can get. You look at temperatures right now, Lakey 93 along with Eagle Pass, 94 in Seguin, right now 93 near Lavernia and Bernie at 93 degrees. As we go through the evening, those stray showers really coming to an end here by sunset and then just mostly clear and temperatures falling through the 80s, then down into the 70s. The new drought monitor is in. We'll take a look at the improvements we've made over the past few weeks coming right up. Should be interesting. Thanks, Adam. Coming up, the next round of Music Acts headlining at next year's San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo have been released. We're going to tell you who's been added to the list. Staying hydrated while on the go. Picking a reusable water bottle that best fits your needs. We've got that coming up after the break. I'm Myra Arthur, and here's what we're working on for the news at 6 o'clock today. It's an event that means so much to families fighting for a cure, and it holds special meaning for us here at KSAT as well. It's almost time again to lace up for Head for the Cure San Antonio to raise money for brain cancer. Today at 6, how much money has been raised since this event started nine years ago, and how you can get involved. And for two years, the pandemic put a stop to San Antonio's Martin Luther King March, the largest in the entire country. Well, now organizers want it back in a big way. How much money they hope the city will contribute. These stories and a lot more coming your way today on the News at 6. Thank you so much, Myra. You see people carrying them everywhere, to work, to school, to the gym. Reusable water bottles help keep plastics out of our landfills, and they help keep you hydrated. Yeah, but there are so many to choose from. So 12 on your side's Marilyn Moore shows us which ones top consumer reports tests. Water bottles are a handy way to hydrate for adults and kids on the go. So you press this down and then you put it up and then start drinking. To help you find a good reusable water bottle, consumer reports tested more than a dozen. We looked at a lot of different bottles. clean go right in the dishwasher or don't have parts with hard to reach areas. Take this camel back for kids. It's completely leak and spill proof thanks to a straw piece that does not detach, but that piece is a little more challenging to clean. If that's a deal breaker, this budget friendly Contigo Trekker strikes a balance between kid friendly and easy to clean. Need durability? Testers say these Yeti Ramblers are nearly indestructible, keep drinks cold for more than 36 hours, and are super easy to clean. The Yeti is a pretty solid and heavy water bottle, so if you've got smaller kids or you want something that's really easy to tote around or like take to the gym, you might want to consider something lighter. For example, this Hydroflax, it weighs less than a pound and it keeps your water pretty cold. 
It also fits perfectly into most cup holders. The wide mouth with straw lid is $40. If ice cold water is not priority, you can save some money with this sun-dried water bottle. It has a silicone mouthpiece that's easy to use and easy to clean. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. The San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo making sure that you'll be kicking up your heels this February. Today, the officials announced the names of additional musical artists that are going to be performing there. So now on the list, Nelly, Tracy Bird, Gary Allen, and the group Midland. Earlier this summer, the Rodeo Committee announced entertainers Leonard Skinner. You'll go to that, right? Kasky, Keith Urban, Los Tigres del Norte, and Lee Bryce, Jake Owen, and Carly Pierce. They're going to be taking the stage at the AT&T Center and Freeman Coliseum grounds. Tickets on sale right now. The Stock Show and Rodeo runs through February 9th through 26th. And if you want a complete list of entertainers, you can check out KSAT.com. I think Ryan Bingham's on that list. You know, it's, it sounds like that's a long ways away, right? It's not really when you think no. about yeah. it. February's not that far away. I mean, we're, we're in September. Stop talking that way, Steve. Just stop. I'm, I'm hoping for cooler weather is actually what I'm hoping for. Yeah, of course, then we'll want it to heat up because it'll be too cold. <laughs> rodeo time. There's always something we can complain <laughs> about. Complain it doesn't about matter. something. I will point out, though, in that live cam view, yeah, that little former um, go-kart track, at least the grass on the infield is green now. Remember, all summer it was brown. It's nice to see it green. You look at the rainfall, heavy rain between Cuero and Victoria. Good to see a few downpours there along the coastal plain. In this activity between Pleasanton and Flor Floresville has really dissipated quite a bit as it's been pushing southward, basically, really, basically paralleling I-37 as it moves southward. And that last little shower we talked about that's left over, there you go. It has dissipated and it's pretty much fallen apart here along I-35 and 410, right? right near Lackland Air Force Base. In terms of actual rainfall accumulations today, we'll take a look at the 12 hour totals here. And everywhere you see the uh, color on the screen, that's where we have had rainfall today. And you see a few streaks, one on the far west side and one on the far south side of San Antonio. When you get into the light greens, that indicates a uh, half an inch of rainfall estimated by the Doppler radar. So 37 and 1604 here about a half an inch, we'll get exact there, at 0.6, and you get off Lamb Road, and we're talking 0.5, so there you have it. Generally under half an inch, but we're, there were a few pockets, obviously, where we had about a half inch of rainfall. And again, we could see a few more through sunset, but that's about it. Okay, drum roll, please. This is the new, this is the old drought monitor, okay? This is three weeks ago. You see the extreme and exceptional drought all across our area to then, Today, we really chipped away at that drought over the past three to four weeks, and it's good to see those improvements. Obviously, we still have some more work to do. We still could use more rain, but we've had some big improvements. And when you look at the state as a whole, 62% of Texas is now considered in drought. And over the past three weeks, we've seen the extreme and exceptional categories drop by over 25%. So that's very significant. Obviously, we've made some big strides. We could still use a bit more, but it looks like we're going to settle into a fairly dry stretch for several days here. There's one exception. We've got this upper level low, this cutoff low. It's separated itself from the main flow in the atmosphere. So just sitting and spinning over New Orleans and the northern Gulf. On the back side of it in this northerly flow, little bits of energy. That's why we had that 10% today, 10 to 20%. And I think we'll have that again tomorrow, a slight chance, 10 to 20% chance. But then as that low progresses eastward, it's out of here. And we're just looking at a sunny and pretty straightforward pattern. Now, this is interesting. Hurricane K making landfall in the western Baja Peninsula here, central Baja, going to bring more heavy rainfall to parts of Baja Peninsula and Southern California as well. Over the next several days, this is slowly going to go right along the coastline before arcing out and then southward. It's not going to be a very strong system, but it's going to bring several inches of rain to the desert of California. Not unheard of, but a unique situation for them. Palm Springs, for example, California averages about four to four and a half inches of rain a year. They could quickly get that within a few days from that system. So 94 are high today. The average 92 record 101 right now. Well, we're at 93. It feels like a degree warmer when you factor in the mugginess. Kerrville at 90, Catula 95, Gonzalez right now at 94, and 88 in Holotus, 86 
Port SA. That's where we've had a few showers. 73 in the morning tomorrow at 7 a.m. By noon, we're talking 89 and then a high temperature of 95, becoming partly cloudy with that off chance of that stray shower. One thing you'll notice in the seven day forecast, pretty much dry and not much variation in temperatures, mid 90s. Thank you, Adam. All right, let's go from San Antonio to Springfield, Massachusetts, where they are getting ready to honor Manu. Our Greg Simmons is there. Greg. Yeah, we're coming to you live right now from the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame right here in Springfield, Massachusetts. It is a Shriment weekend for Manu Ginobili, and we are here for all the festivities. When we come back, we'll get you ready for that. Plus, when we come back, big game coverage week number three kicks off tonight. Coming up. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome live to Springfield, Massachusetts, which is home to the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. We're here tipping off our coverage with Manu Ginobili's induction on Saturday night. Before that big event, he has other duties to perform tomorrow. Becomes the fourth Spurs player to be inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame as a member of the class of 22, following the Iceman George Gervin, the Admiral David Robinson, most recently Tim Duncan, and the same class included the late Kobe Bryant. What makes Manu's journey to the Hall so amazing is that, in fact, he was a 57th overall pick in the second round in 99 in NBA draft. Didn't even start playing the NBA until 2002, spending all 16 of his seasons in silver and black, coming off the bench for most of his career. Still, he was able to help lead the Spurs to four championships in 03, 05, 07, and 14, before retiring his number 20 to the Raptors of the AT&T Center. So, of those four titles, which were his favorites? There's two special ones for me. One is 14, because after 13, I may have thought that it was not going to happen again. I was very hurt. I was devastated, I was disappointed, and uh, having come back with mostly the same team, having the opportunity to play against the same team, and you know, uh, redeem ourselves and play in such a beautiful way, and being part of something that uh, still watch highlights and I get emotional. Manu will attend an autograph session at the Mohegan Sun Convention Complex tomorrow, along with his press conference before the induction ceremonies of the Naismith Hall of Fame on Saturday night. Remember, a new tradition starts tonight in the Judson Independent School District with Operation Dog Tags. This is a new district-wide tradition to recognize military veterans from that community and begins tonight at Rutledge Stadium where Wagner hosts San Marcos that will include the Army's Golden Knights parachuting in the colors. Now, besides the Wagner game, we also have Reagan and Clark, Holmes and Warren, Randolph YMLA, Pearsall Memorial, Jefferson Sam Houston, and Tony at Bernie. The, remember, that game was moved up one day due to technical issues. And, by the way, Dak Prescott had to leave Prescott early today for the Dallas Cowboys with some ankle issues caused by new cleats. He says it's no big deal. We'll see. Back with more news after this. Before we go, I want to show you this traffic trouble spot. This is I-35 and St. Mary's. You can see where the two levels separate there. Very slow going, especially on the lower level. Again, I-35 and St. Mary's. Don't know of any traffic accidents necessarily that are here, but it is very busy this time of day. Thanks so much for watching the News at 5 with us. World News up next. We'll see you back here at 6.